Hello and welcome to that Eurovision site. I'm Angus and today I'm joined by the incredible Christina Clara who is performing in Festival da Canção 2024 with her song Primavera. Hi Christina, first of all, how are you? Hello Angus, I'm fine. Now pretty busy but also pretty excited as the, the festival is almost there. <laughs> yeah, it's getting close. Um, so for me and for many Eurovision fans, this will be the first time that we get to know you and your music. Could you please tell us a bit about yourself? Yes, well, I am originally from the north of Portugal, uh, but I've been living in Lisbon for several years. I came Actually, I came to Lisbon to work as a nurse in the central hospital. Uh, and then I started some theatre and voice courses at the same time. I participated in a theatre production as a fado singer. And you probably know fado as a Portuguese traditional musical genre. And then uh, I started to be being invited to, to, to sing in fado houses. And then I never stopped. I started by fado and then... I, I get to know other musicians from other parts of the world, especially from Cape Verde and Brazil. Um, and now I have my debut album in Spotify, Lua Adversa, that means something like Contrary Moon, um, that was released in 2021. Lovely. So, um, yeah, you're competing in Festival da Canção this year with the beautiful Primavera. Uh, what is the song about? Yes, Primavera means spring actually. And it's something about, um, I guess, um, how can I say it? How we can transcend ourselves beyond our fears and discouragement. He also talks about how to transform winter moments, well, in a, in a personal perspective and also globally as humanity, as we are facing some serious difficulties all around the world in communicating, with each other and finding some richness in, in the difference between us. Uh, the song also mentions our voice as kind of a, a wing that can lead us beyond, that can make us uh, close from dialogue and from, from that, um, that place where we have something in common and we can, uh, well, meet each other actually for real. That's very lovely. I think also a very uh, important message to send out in uh, mm -hmm. this day and age, especially. Yes. Um, so yeah, RTP, so the Portuguese broadcaster, has a long tradition of inviting songwriters to the festival. What was it like to ask to be asked by them to participate? Yes, it was a big surprise. I was not expecting, as my first album is very recent, so I thought it wouldn't be so early. Um, and that was really uh, an honor to be invited because it seems like people are recognizing the work and also trusting my work. So I said yes immediately, even if I don't do like pop music, there is more common to be in the um, in the in the festival. Um, but it was it was a big a big challenge. It's, it is currently being a, a big challenge, and um, I'm very happy to be part of it. That's great. Uh, and you definitely deserve that spot. The, your music is amazing. Um, Thank you. As you said, also, like, not only your song now has, like, is about dialogues and having dialogues, but your your music in general draws inspiration from multiple cultures and genres. And your first album, album is also a dialogue between uh, different uh, cultures and identities mm -hmm. and everything. Um, so what was the inspiration behind uh, the song musically? Yes. Well, I wrote this Primavera for a melody written by Jean Luz, who is a Cape Verdean composer, living here in Lisbon also for several years. We started working together in a, a FADO project, actually uh, looking forward to uh, explore the affinities and also the differences between FADO and Morna from Cape Verde. Um, and some originals came out from that um, collaboration and Primavera was one of these songs. So it, it, it 
it, it has a lot of um, influence from Fado and Morna. Uh, and it has this rhythm, very, very traditional in, in Morna, especially. Lovely. Um, so obviously you can't say too much, but is there anything you can maybe tell us already about what your performance at Festival that Can Sell will look like? Yes, actually, I'll be I'll be revealing some details in my in my Instagram soon, so be tuned. <laughs> but I can say I will not be alone. I will have some musicians with me um, with a, an important instrument that for me is very symbolic, also of my my last years exploring traditional music. So that was the, the, the goal for to, to put together some important symbols for me, like the message, the instruments, uh, what I believe in music. So I think it would be surprising because a lot of people listen to the music and cannot imagine how it will be uh, alive because it seems very quiet. But I think I will maybe surprise some people, yes. Yeah, I mean that's definitely what I what I would have at first thought what the stage would look like, but it uh, it sounds very exciting and I'm definitely intrigued. Uh, so yeah, I'll definitely be keeping an eye on your Instagram. Um, <laughs> so you've performed at some amazing venues and festivals mm -hmm. already. You've also done like theater tours and like things there, but the festival that can sell is truly a thing of its own. Um, are you doing anything special to prepare for your performance or is it very much, are you approaching it the same way as your other performances? Mm -hmm. Well, actually, every concert, I think what I'm going to do in this particular uh, stage with for these people in this place, in this moment of my life and of the world, I always like to think about the set list as a narrative, as a story to tell and include people in that story. So for me, preparing a show is always that process. Here in festival, my big difficulty was to have only one song to, show, to tell the story. So I, that's why I, I thought about the message uh, and, and it's very important for me. Uh, I, I really like to use some um, images uh, to give people some uh, freedom to, to think about the meaning of the things. And, and that was my, my main goal, like to, to have a, an, an, import, a, an important message, at least for me. And I think it is really an important message for everyone in a stage like festival where Eurovision, where a lot of musicians from different parts of the world are, are together and, and sharing that strong experience. Um, so I think that building this show for uh, Eurovision or for to, well, Festival de Canção in Portugal uh, was mainly, for me, was mainly about what message do I want to, to take to that stage more than the, the visual part. Um, even though if it, it comes together, of course, I thought about it, but, but for me, it was more important like the message to if I'm gonna have this voice that will reach more people, what should I say? What do I want to say? So yeah, that also lovely goes into my next question actually, which is um as you also said, Festival da Cansao is a massive cultural event, but it's mm -hmm. also the Portuguese national final for Eurovision. And uh what would winning the festival and going to Eurovision mean to you? Mm, well, that would be a um a great uh, adventure for sure to meet a lot of people to travel around the world <laughs> with my music actually one of the the things that i i desire the most for me and my music is that that thing of taking my music and my partners in music and go around the world sharing experiences with other people other cultures other musicians that is the main thing for me so i think that would be the big uh, prize for me in terms of winning the Eurovision. Um, I think it's that. Definitely. Um, so as we've already like established, you have a lot of experience performing outside of Portugal. You've also worked with a lot of uh, international artists and musicians. Um, did you learn anything from performing abroad in front of different cultures and everything that will help you prepare for 
festival that can sell um, potentially Eurovision? Yes, I, 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 I'm thinking about it uh, currently, actually. And I think I, I learned a lot from a lot of experiences in life connecting to other people and not only in music, actually as a nurse as well. I think I, 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 I trained a lot on how to communicate with people from different parts, with, with different circumstances, different uh, social ambiences too. So I think I'm now kind of um, comfortable with that. And I, I, I do believe, I maybe because I love it, to communicate and to reach people in different ways, like to think, how can I reach that person or how can I communicate or... Um, I, I'm really interested in knowing other people's way of thinking, etc. So I think it helps a lot to really want to reach people. And I think that is the, the, the thing, um, that, experience, that experience of traveling and communicating with people all around the world is, is mainly about um, making, making it normal as well, not like whoa, what am I going to do? What am I going to do now? Like, it's it's uh, part of our daily routine. And actually in Lisbon, there are a lot of people from different parts of the world. So it kind of makes part of our uh, daily routine as well. That's lovely. That really lovely. Um, so Portugal has a long and proud history in the Eurovision Song Contest. Uh, what's your favorite Eurovision entry from Portugal? And what's your favorite Eurovision entry from another country? <laughs> it's so difficult for me to answer that because different different songs of different genres and well, in different moments, it's very difficult like to to, to pick one. I, and I think the the best song is always the one that fits our moment or world's moment, like socially, politically. And it would be the best song because it really reflects what we want to, to say or what we feel. But in, 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 in regards to that, maybe I will choose E Depois do Adeus. That was um, a song in Portugal sang by Paulo de Carvalho. And it was used um, as kind of um, a password for the revolution on the 25th of April. And we're completing now 50 years of our revolution, of the end of the dictature. So I would pick that song as a, a great symbol for Portugal. Internationally, um, I confess I'm not so informed about, uh, because I, I'm, 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 fundamentally, I, I listened to the Portuguese contest in my early years. But maybe recently, I would not so recently, but I would choose maybe Euphoria. It's a good song. That's always Euphoria a very good it? pick. Yeah. And your port <laughs> also great choice for the Portuguese entry. Definitely, like especially now um, with the anniversary and everything, yes. a very, uh, very important song. So, um, sure. actually, earlier you already brought up that you struggled picking just one song for the festival. Mm -hmm. Um, what other music of yours would you recommend to people who want to uh, listen to more of your music? Okay, so I have an album on Spotify that is Lua Adversa. And I would recommend maybe the first single, Lua, uh, that has uh, lyrics was written by me. And the music is um, Pedro Locke's music, a Brazilian great musician. And it has some important influence of the Brazilian Choro there. It's a great tune, <laughs> in my <laughs> modest opinion. <laughs> and also Manjericos, that is the first song of the album, and it's inspired on Fado Universe, um, even though it was composed by a, a Brazilian um, composer, uh, Tatiana Kobat. And so I think that that mixture is actually what I want to talk about. That uh, we can um, talk about something in different languages and understand ourselves. <laughs> yeah, so definitely go check those out. I, I will definitely listen to them uh, <laughs> after this interview. So looking ahead, do you have any plans to follow up Primavera with more music this year? Yes, actually, I'm dreaming about my next album and I probably will be recording it in the end of by the end of this year. So. 
yes, very, very soon we'll have news. Ooh, very exciting. Very yeah. much looking forward to that. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, th thank you for this opportunity. Uh, thank you for joining thank me you. here. Is there anything you would like to say to the people watching this interview? Well, I would I would suggest to people to follow me on Instagram because I'm very active there and I'm I'm sharing almost every day some some news about this process that is being very very challenging for me for me and and also people can can understand better I think that just listen to the music will not um, give people the the truth scenario or the whole scenario so I think it's always good to get to know the artist and the the way he or she works. So in my case, I would love to, to share with more people the way I, I think and, and build my, my music. Uh, and of course, to listen to Festival de Canção on the 24 first, um, the 24th of February, and then the 2nd of March, where I will be with my Primavera, and I would love to, to have the people listening to it. So yes, definitely. Uh, as you said, uh, you'll be performing in the second semi-final of Festival de Casau on March 2nd. You're also performing as second, so it's twos all the way down. Yes. Uh, so uh, yeah, if, if you are anywhere in the world, you can just watch it on the RTP website. If you are in Portugal, don't forget your vote does count and you can vote for Cristina Clara and her song Primavera to get her to the final and then one week later, get her to Eurovision. Uh, so thank yeah, you. thank you very much and goodbye. Thank you, Andy. <laughs> it was a pleasure. Bye bye. <laughs>